Hey guys, Chris and Martha here. We want to share our experience with General RV with you. We're going to talk through step by step what we went through with our purchase process, why we contacted the CEO, and what we think of General RV as a whole. Chris and I decided to go RVing full time. We had to do a lot of research. Living in Alaska, that meant YouTube. <laughs> yeah, we became YouTube experts on RVs and uh, it was our main source of information because the dealerships in Alaska were limited and supply was next to none uh, due to the pandemic. I went through about a dozen different dealerships um, online and I had reached out to the salespeople at each dealership and asked for quotes from each of the dealerships uh, comparing prices to see who was going to give us the best option uh, for purchasing our new RV. We went with General RV because they gave us the best price. Now that process wasn't smooth. I'm going to start with how that went with internet sales. The salesperson refused to put our deal in writing line by line and give me an itemized purchase agreement without a thousand dollar deposit. I was pissed. No way around it. They quoted on email the best price out of anybody that we ran across, but they would not put an itemized list together for us, an actual sales agreement that we could see the out the door price. So this is where the CEO comes in. I went on to LinkedIn, found out family owned company, figured out who's running the company and I messaged him directly. Um, I sent him quite the novel about how his sales process or at least this salesman was doing a bad thing for his company and putting a really bad taste in our mouth to require somebody a thousand dollar non-refundable deposit just to get a sales agreement was not acceptable. So what that meant was Chris wrote a letter. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to write a letter. And he wrote it. And he actually got a response back. I did. Within 24 hours, I had got a response back, uh, not from the CEO, but from the regional sales manager, who then took over the deal for us. Uh, the regional sales manager quickly put together our offer, uh, sent that over to us by email, had line item, had everything lined out exactly the way we wanted, which you'll see on the screen right now. There was no shadiness, everything was on the up and up, the fees were clearly declared, and we were happy with the deal. We decided to order a Valor, uh, which you all know by now, and they required 10% down. Uh, the process for requiring down was pretty much the same from everybody. It varied on how much each dealer or dealership wanted. General wanted 10% down, which we were comfortable with to place the order for the RV the way we wanted it done. Once the RV was ordered, we were quoted about what, 12 weeks? Yeah. And that ended up being 14, right? 14, once it showed up, the PDI, their PDI caught that there was a problem with this slide right behind us. We were supposed to pick up our Valor on May 26th from General RV in Ocala, Florida. That did not happen. We got to view our Valor that day chris and i went ahead and purchased our valor we did our pdi they agreed on the things that needed to be fixed before we take possession but we wanted to go ahead and start the process for the dmv since we were alaska residents sat down with the finance manager who was clueless super nice guy felt like everything was on the up and up and he was doing his job he was trying to sell every warranty for everything you could ever imagine Make sure you do your own homework because the items that are in the trailer have their own warranties. Um, our tires came with a 12 month road hazard warranty. They were trying to sell us one. Uh, some of our appliances come with anything from between a two to five year warranty. They were trying to sell us on that. Um, kind of a, a bumper to bumper warranty. When I asked for the exclusions, my God, I got about 15 pages and reading through it, basically it's useless. So do your homework. Their job is to upsell you on extended warranties 
and that's exactly what he did. Now, there was no high pressure sales. There was nothing that was inappropriate. Um, he just was not familiar with Alliance or some of the warranties that come along with this particular brand because it is newer. Mm -hmm. So know what you're getting into if you decide to go down the path of the extended warranty. If you need that and that's a comfort for you, just make sure you do some homework. You don't have to buy it through the dealership. There's options. Absolutely. Yeah, the communication after we closed on the deal, I don't think it was intentionally bad. I think that they are just overwhelmed and their turnaround time to get back to somebody or to actually be there to answer the phone is terrible. We just wanted updates if there was anything we could do, uh, estimated time because we needed to start booking RV parks. We already had to cancel some because of the delay. What we end up doing is calling Bill and Jim from Alliance. They were absolutely amazing. So they were able to get updates from him directly and then in turn get it back to us. So once we finalized our deal on May 26th, it was pulling teeth to get any information until it was time for us to pick it up. We wanted to do a second walkthrough on July 2nd, which Martha did a video on and I, I won't go through the details on that. I was all by myself <laughs> <laughs> during that PDI due to someone having a work trip and flights getting delayed and all that. But you'll see that in the other video. When it comes time to do your walkthrough, your PDI, to make sure you're satisfied before you drive off with your coach, stand your ground and don't let them rush you. I'm sure you've all seen there has been the smudge, as they mentioned, that has turned into quite the nasty little um, issue with General RV. We didn't have a smudge. So buying an RV is a business transaction. You need to take the emotion out of it. And I'm not going to say it's an investment because we all know these rolling boxes on wheels are not a good investment. But a business transaction needs to be absent of emotion. So when you get pissed off by the internet sales guy like I did and you go to the CEO and you write that letter and you get the deal you wanted but you had to jump through hoops, for the thousands of dollars it saved me, it's worth it. Now, we know going into the purchase that there was a high likelihood we will never return to General RV for service. Not because I think their service is poor. Actually, our manufacturer spoke very highly of them and their capabilities. But we know, being mobile, being on the road, that we're going to have to get things fixed wherever we are when things happen. So for us, it wasn't about a hometown dealer who was going to build a relationship with us. It was a financial decision that was going to save us as much money as possible to purchase the trailer. Now, that said, you can answer this question for him. Would we use General RV again? Possibly, yes. Yeah, because I don't feel like there was anything that was shady there was no miscommunication when it came to the prices. There was no hidden fees. There was no add-ons. There was no additions. The financing was exactly what they said it was going to be. The interest rate was exactly where they said it was going to be. The delivery process was good. They caught problems. They fixed problems. Business transaction, emotion aside, they did everything to fulfill their requirement. And we had no problems with that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this was a little bit helpful and give you some personal insights on what our experiences were. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. And if you think we're out of our stinking minds, let us know in the comments. Uh, we always appreciate the feedback.